Matt, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Lauren. It's good to be here. Good to be back with you. Yes, good to be back. You were on the podcast a while ago, just talking about the launch of Student Ministry Circle and all the fun yeah. things that are happening over in that side of Next Gen Ministry Network. And so we're super pumped that you are back on the podcast today. We are talking about Promotion Sunday. Yes, we are. An exciting thing to talk about. Ready to share some takes that I know that you agree with, but I'm um, excited <laughs> to share some ideas about what to do about Promotion Sunday. Yes, <clears throat> some maybe hot takes. So we'll see. Uh, but first, yeah. I thought it'd be fun to share our own experiences with Promotion Sunday. Uh, yes. I feel like we both have some interesting stories to share. We grew up in like early or like early to late nineties, early two thousands, we were in that kind yes. of culture of church, which, you know, is, was very interesting. And so mm -hmm. why don't you start by sharing your promotion Sunday stories? So in the days of Elijah, as we would sing <laughs> that song <laughs> and Prince of what? Peace, that's how old, you know, the, these, we are, these are the days of a lot, you know, that kind of, that's in the early 2000s, the late 90s. Uh, I don't remember that song. You don't remember that song? You need to look it up. Everyone that's listening to this needs to pause the podcast. Okay, we'll link it in the show notes. <laughs> Prince of Peace and Days of Elijah. No, Great I remember Prince songs. Of, I remember Prince of Peace. But in our student ministry, we did the like waves of mercy, waves of Oh, yeah, grace. classic. Well, yeah. think about singing all of those songs and then having like our promotion uh, Sunday kind of thing where we would uh -huh. go up on stage. And man, I just remember um, a couple of times it was going from fifth grade to sixth grade, which I'll talk uh -huh. about that controversy in a second. That yeah. would be a time where we would go on stage and everyone would wave and all this kind of stuff. Yep. And then with the graduating seniors, okay. uh, my older brothers uh, and, and myself, <clears throat> we were given as a gift. Um, we, we were prayed over, but, but our gift for graduating high school was a compass that we would never lose our way. And that true <laughs> north pointed to God. Like that was, was our it, distinguishing thing, you know? Was it engraved? Did it have your name on it? It was not engraved. Oh no. It was not. It was it was not cheap. It was not cheap, but it wasn't like quality, if you know what I'm saying. Right, right, and it was right, not right. engraved. It was it was that. Um and then at the church that I grew up in, there was heavy controversy controversy about uh -huh. um like when if someone is in sixth grade, are they ready to move up or are they right. not? And are yeah. they in student ministry, youth ministry, or are they not? Uh -huh. And so it, we were given the opportunity. The parents could decide if their rising fifth grader into sixth grader could go into youth group or not. And I remember it divided our fifth and sixth grade class. Like, I mean, just sheeps and goats. So I was one of the ones that was like, yeah, I'm going to sixth grade. See you guys later. Right. I'm going to youth group. And there was still like a remnant of like, not that being in homeschool is bad, but it's like homeschoolers, not in public school, that they uh -huh. stayed in kids ministry in sixth grade. And it was just kind of this like weird, weird. year of transition. It was so strange. Um, so I'm I'm a part of the the sheep not the goats. Actually, yeah, that's what I want to be. And uh, got moved up into youth group in the sixth grade and then was given a compass for finishing all seven years faithful wow. to Jesus. Wow. Wow. Okay. That's a good story. I am going to say I think my story tops yours. Okay. Um, okay, great. <laughs> so I grew up in Southern California to give some people some context and grew up in we kind of like did early elementary and like middle school and parts of high school at the same church. And we were in, in this, like, I'm trying to like set the scene here. So there's this mm -hmm. large room and there's a wall divider in between, like in the middle of this large room that, that you can roll out on Sunday mornings. One side was elementary on Sundays. One side was middle school on Sunday mornings. And so on promotion Sunday, it's like this big deal because they open up one panel of the wall. And so 
And so they open up one panel of the wall uh -huh. and all the fifth graders get to walk through the wall, basically. Yeah. And on the other side of students, it's like a full on rave, like loud, intense music. It's black. <laughs> And like people are screaming at you what? and it's like absolutely insane for me. It was <laughs> terrifying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so we walk in and it's like black lights, everybody's screaming. There's really loud music. It's like exactly the. And then you like sit down and you're like, I don't know what's going to happen. And. <laughs> They like play a game because, you know, every good youth ministry has a game at the top of, of the service. Got to have it's fun. Like one of the, it's like one of the full on like let's blend a McDonald's meal in a blender <laughs> and invite some of our <laughs> incoming sixth graders to drink it. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I did not participate because I don't participate in games. Um, and it was so – like literally I was like I, I – I'm never coming back here. And oh, that's no. when I turned around and I was like, let me serve in kids. Yeah. So I'm never leaving. <laughs> and it was that and sounds like, like I, a similar, that is terrifying. Yeah. And I grew up in a, like my youth group. I had like five different youth pastors over the course of five years. Yeah. And so like a huge turnover and mm -hmm. it was, I, my youth group was a little bit clicky in terms of like, if you were not a high school boy, you kind mm -hmm. of were on the outs. Mm -hmm. And obviously I was not a high school boy. Um, no. I was still heavily <laughs> involved in kids ministry. And so youth ministry was like, not really my jam. Even to this day, yeah. it's not really my jam. So anyways, that's my promotion <laughs> Sunday. Um, horror story that I look back on. And even as a kids director, we played one year we brought in our student pastor and we did egg roulette with our fifth graders, which was yeah. so fun. They like Great asked game. questions to get to know. They asked questions to get to know the youth pastor and it was like our fifth yeah. graders. But, you know, I like <clears throat> they had on um, ponchos so they didn't get dirty with the eggs. OK, yeah, it was, yeah. you know, compromise. So it's like it's the light version of it. Yeah, the light version but anyways, mm -hmm. that's my promotion Sunday story. I don't have a like high school graduation story because we had left the church when I graduated high school. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's it. One of my close friends who I was at her wedding a number of years ago and um, <clears throat> she was the girl that uh, for one of the promotion youth groups that we did who had to, you know, the game, similar game, but it's like you have to take a Coke can and put your sock over it and drink yes. your, your, the Coke through the sock. Well, our youth pastor was like, hey, we're going to do this game. You have to go up and you have to take your sock off and put it over your Coke. Ready, set. Oh, don't go yet. And then you pass the Coke can to the person to your left. Oh, my gosh. And that's so gross. Kara, Kara Hench, now Dayhoff, had to drink my – had to drink the Coke through my sock. She never came back to youth group. Ever, like ever, like it was years. Like she was terrified and we had grown up together and I kept, I was like, I, would you come back? And she's like, no, I will never go to youth group. And then she eventually did come back and it was like a redemptive story. It was so oh beautiful. It was great. Gosh, but like, that, that was the so reason gross. stupid promotion games, you know, and obviously yeah. gross games. Although, yeah. Oh yeah. gosh, that's so gross. Anyways. So I feel all that to say, we share our stories because you want to think intentionally about Promotion yes. Sunday as yes, you, you are transitioning your fifth graders <laughs> to the sixth graders and or however your age groups land. But I think mm -hmm. doing it with intention, but also thinking about not necessarily planning just for the middle school boy, because there are yes, middle school boys correct. everywhere who thinks that is the coolest thing <laughs> on the planet that you just blended a McDonald's meal together. But thinking about the whole group that it's coming into your ministry, and this is also why I think it's really helpful for kids ministry leaders and student ministry leaders to work together because yes. then the kids ministry leader can be like, hey, maybe save that game for like a couple months in, not uh -huh. day one. 
Yes, correct. Yes, correct. <laughs> Welcome to student ministry where things get gross. Yes, yeah, not the thing that you want to promote, you know, in your yeah. ministry. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to walk through different promotions that you that your church may experience. And mm-hmm. what's what I have found and what you have found is that there's like these three components to Promotion Sunday. And both of us feel really strongly that you can't have a milestone or a promotion Sunday without the influence and the partnership of the parent. You can throw yeah, like a party celebrating these kids on Sunday morning, but the whole point of a milestone moment or a promotion Sunday or a move up Sunday is to invite the whole family in. And I always think about how throughout the Old Testament, we see like God and the prophets and God's people being like, don't forget don't mm-hmm. forget God's mm-hmm. faithfulness and the works that he's done. And I feel like this milestone or promotion Sunday is the perfect time to say, parents, don't forget. Yes, don't forget exactly. how God has carried you through this previous season of parenting mm-hmm. and how he will continue carrying you through this next season of parenting, which can feel sometimes really, really scary, especially as parents are heading into those teen years. Yeah. And so that's why when we think through these three lenses for promotion Sunday, which are teaching, equipping and blessing that Mm -hmm. will really help you partner with parents well, but also celebrate the kids and really think of the whole family as a unit. When you think about promotion Sunday and these milestones. Yep. Yeah. I I think those three things to help parents um, understand like what the purpose of the milestone is and to teach them Uh, about what is coming next, but then also Mm -hmm. just, I mean, you nailed it. Hey, God has been faithful to bring your kid and to bring you to this point. And so then we want to equip you for the journey uh, along the way. Like what is to come? We want to help prepare you for that in some way. And then we want to bless you as a minister uh, to say, hey, God is with you. God has got We want to pray blessing and favor over you uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then just to say, hey, we are with you in this too. I think Mm -hmm. those are great three things to, to look at. Yep. So let's start with kindergarten graduation or preschoolers moving into kindergarten. I think this is one of the most overlooked promotion moments and milestone moments, but I think this is actually one of the big ones. Um, And Matt and I I both have kindergartners this year. So we both Mm -hmm. just moved into this season of having our oldest kids in full-time elementary school. And Mm -hmm. this one really kind of hit home with me as I reflected on just my daughter entering into kindergarten and how that changed not only her, but just the trajectory of kind of our family. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I think this is a really sweet moment to give parents some space to stop. Um, If you are a parent of young kids or work alongside parents of young kids, you know, those toddler and preschool years are so full. They're hard at seasons. They're exhausting. It's what they say with like parenting the younger years is that it's more physically demanding. And then as you get into the older years, it's more emotionally demanding. And so those younger years are like a wild season. And then you get to kindergarten and you're like, wait, we've entered into this new season where for a lot of families, not all families, because, but for a lot of families, their child is away from them five days a week for a long time. And obviously Mm -hmm. if you're homeschooling, there's a different aspect to that. But for most families in America, they send their kids to a school, whether it's public or private. Um, And that changes the dynamic of the family unit. And in this milestone moment to give parents the opportunity to just stop and say, Hey, remember when they were two and you never thought you'd be entering this season and you never thought you would make it. And here they are moving into kindergarten. But also there's this really sweet aspect of your kids are going to start learning at a hyperspeed level. Exactly. And they're going to start reading and they're going to start learning. And the way that you disciple them has to change because the yes. way that their minds are changing. And so this yes. is why that teaching aspect is so important to these three aspects of promotion Sunday is because most of your parents don't know how to do this. 
Mm-hmm. And oftentimes kids ministry leaders and student ministry leaders just dis- expect that like, oh, you're a believer. You should know how to disciple your kids. And mm-hmm. it's not like you have kids for the first time and God like downloads all this information into your brain. That would be so nice, but that just doesn't <laughs> happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And so us as ministry leaders get to teach them what this looks like and gets to teach them how to do it and, and how to do it well and how to do it with perseverance. And then you can equip them. You can give them things to, to disciple their kids, like tools and resources. And we'll get to, at the very end, we're going to talk about all the fun things that you can give students and kids for promotion Sunday. But that's what I would say about kindergarten graduation. Matt, as you think about how you promoted your son into kindergarten, what are some things that maybe would have been helpful in the discipleship process or things worth celebrating um, as you guys made this transition? Yeah, I just think back to um, whenever my kid was in preschool, when my son was in preschool, and just like things were very different. I would have loved um, some time <clears throat> to really receive teaching during that phase of life. Like when, yeah. when my kid was a preschooler and he was about to enter into kindergarten, like that's a foundational moment. And it's around the, that same age, like preschool, kindergarten, where mm-hmm. as a parent, I would have loved to, to know how to have like a family devotional time mm-hmm. with my kid. Um, yeah, yeah, you're right. I missed the download of like how to disciple <laughs> your kids. So I'm just trying everything that can work. And I'm in ministry. I've yeah. been in ministry for a long time. And so I'm just trying things that I know that works for older kids. Mm-hmm. And now I have to like work it through with my, my younger kid. And yeah. so I think the idea, um, of like, Hey, what does it look like to have a devotional time with mm-hmm. your kid? Yeah. How does it have, how do I have a conversation to like process the things that they're going through, um, at school and because they're, I mean, they're, my kid is in, in public school and it's just, they see a lot of things, mm-hmm. a lot of things that I don't want them to be a part of. Like, how do I do that with grace and kindness? What yeah. are some really good questions that I can process with them that are not, you know, like that are not yes or no questions, but are really like probing for them to comprehend their day and for me to understand what they're going through, to really understand that, hey, this is an open dialogue. Like you can mm-hmm. always talk with me. Yeah. Uh, and then we reorient things to Jesus and really how to do that on a way, uh, in a way that's um, on their level. So I, yeah. I, I deal with middle school and high schoolers all the time, and I'm trying to get and contextualize the gospel into their level. And so mm-hmm. as a parent, <clears throat> I oftentimes feel under-equipped to say, oh, how do I do this at a six-year-old level, a five-year-old yeah. level? Um, so as you are thinking ministers, like how to do this, put yourself in the shoe of a parent and just say, how can I help them contextualize the gospel and have my kid comprehend it through questions? Um, like Mm -hmm. if you can have like three or four questions that they can just constantly ask about who the people they're meeting, um, how to process their day. Some of those things would be super helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. And one thing that comes to mind that we actually talk a lot about at our own local church is just this idea of story. And Mm -hmm. when kids enter the school, they start to hear all of these false stories. Mm -hmm. Um, Like even little things like I'm not fast enough or like I was made different or I'm not smart enough, like all of these false stories that they may find themselves living in. And what does it look like to equip your parents to remind their kids every day of the true story, the story that yeah. they are a part of. And I think yeah. kindergarten is and pre and, and the preschool is the perfect time to start implementing these types of conversations of like, do you know that you are a part of God's big story? And this is what mm. it, this is what the story is. And this is how we get to continue on in the story that God is writing. And this is the true story that like we want to be a part of. We don't necessarily want to be a part of what culture is telling us. And that's a really hard conversation that I've even had yes. with my own kindergartner. I'm like, how do we, like even things like our family is just different. We say these things yeah. and not these things. And mm-hmm. my daughter asks the hardest questions. And so like equipping your parents to engage their kids at a much more theological, um, but also educational level. 
I think that yeah. is a huge shift that kids make into kindergarten. Um, but thinking practically, like, what does this actually look like? One of the one of my favorite ways that I've done or have seen done a kindergarten promotion is doing a breakfast on either mm-hmm. on Sunday during church or on Saturday morning and just gathering all the kindergarten families together. Maybe it could mm-hmm. be maybe in your church building or even at somebody's home, like hosting something for the incoming kindergartners and just gathering your parents around. And I think this is something that you could do with kids and parents at the same table of just saying, of just being excited about kindergarten. Sometimes there's a lot of anxiety, both in parents and in kids about doing something new. And so for the church to be like, no, we're so excited for you to do this. And here's why. Like you Mm -hmm. get to bring the light of Jesus into your school, whether it's a private school or public school or whatever the scenario looks like. And we want to help you understand what that means. You could divide the kids. You could take the kindergartners and do something fun with them while you get time with the parents. And so that teaching piece, just don't forget that piece as you're thinking about kindergartner parents um, and then equipping. This is a great time. If you've got like introductory discipleship resources, things like, Bible verse memorization cards. Um, One of my favorite things that I would give out is Lethos Kids has a Kingdom of God book that it's Mm. beautiful and it just walks through just like all the things that Jesus talks about the Kingdom of God. And I think it's just a beautiful keepsake that like kids and families can read together. And it's a great introductory yeah. discipleship resource. Um, yeah. But listing out podcasts to listen to and like different resources that you can equip the parents and saying, Hey, here's what it looks like to do a devotional time. Here's what songs that we're singing in our elementary environment. Yeah, exactly. Things like that to prepare the families for what's going to happen and what their kids are going to experience, not just in school, but also on Sunday mornings in your programming, mm-hmm. what that looks like. Um, I always laugh because one of the biggest things that I hear all the time is kindergartners miss snack time because they get <laughs> often get snack in preschool, but they don't get snack in kindergarten. Yep. Mm-hmm. So um, that's just thinking a little bit practically. Matt, can you talk to us a little bit about this blessing piece that yeah. we think is wise to kind of weave through all of these promotions? Yeah, I think the blessing part is something that we have to we have to go to the Lord and ask for favor amongst for, for families and for the mm-hmm. kid. And so the way that I've done and seen previously for the kinder kind of the first time into school is the the blessing and the praying over the backpacks amongst mm. the service um, yeah. and like amongst the parents <clears throat> is like, Hey, here's this tangible thing with the kids. So sometimes people don't like their kid to go up front, but like, Hey, here's the backpack that yeah. represents my kid. And then this journey of this school education season that they are in. So like, let's play, let's pray for God's blessing to be over them. And really that's just asking God to pour out favor amongst them, that they would protect them, preserve them, uh, give them endurance and pour out grace. And so Mm -hmm. in all those ways, uh, I've seen it in the church doing that as like the church being the family to bless the kids that are, as they enter into school, but also like families being able to bless their own kids and just having that be a big milestone of like, Hey, this is the start of your education journey. Mm -hmm. You're going to be out of the house more often. And we want to just pray over every time that you put on this backpack, know that you go in the name of the Lord Jesus into a place, whether you're a believer at that time or not, that you're coming from a family that loves Jesus. That's one that wants you to know Jesus. And it is primary, not, not, not necessarily your educational career, but primary to you is your spiritual development that we want to bless you in the name of Jesus for. So I think that's a crucial element. And we'll weave that through with the other uh, promotion bits um, today. But <clears throat> I think it starts out in that kindergarten time um, of like church family blessing and praying mm-hmm. for kids or even just your family uh, as simple as a backpack or just praying yeah. for your kid uh, in that way. Yeah, I love that idea. Some other practical ideas I've seen done is, um, especially if you have families who have been around since they dedicated their children early on, like coming back to maybe commitments that they made or things Mm -hmm. that they shared in that season of saying like, okay, this was in this season when you had an itty bitty baby. Now, Mm -hmm. what are those commitments look like for you in this new season? Maybe rewrite them or... yeah. 
like reconsider what this looks like for your family. Um, and then another thing I, another really practical example of equipping parents is giving them a prayer to say in the car. And so Mm -hmm. it like is one of those like, uh, review your mirror, like hangers or just mm-hmm. something that they could stick in their car. Um, I actually just started this with our kids, um, yeah. because I heard it somewhere and I was like, this is something that we can do. It's really awkward. I will say if you are doing this, it's a learning curve. Um, but like, what would it look like for you to hand a laminated card that says, pray this before your kids either head out the door to get on the bus or before they exit the car to go to school. Um, And that's just a really easy way that you can help parents keep the gospel at the forefront and continue to disciple them as they go um, to school. So that's great. Yeah, I love that. Okay, let's move on up to promoting kids from kids to students, whether that's fifth grade, fourth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, whatever you do. There's all sorts of things. Matt, talk to us about from a student ministry perspective, your thoughts on promoting kids from fifth grade to sixth grade or from kids to students. I have two thoughts. The time to do it is at the beginning of the summer. Don't wait kids are done kids are done like and everything in their system in their environment tells them um, whenever they are done with school they are done with that grade and then so it just gets so confusing about what grade you're in oh i have to use this phrase they're a rising sixth grader all those kind of things no (laughs) they are this right yeah not a fifth grader anymore they are a sixth grader they are in their head that they've already checked out um i i think starting that and doing the promotion at the end of the school year, once they're done with their classes is a huge win to get them into the, the student ministry, the youth ministry as quickly as possible and just have mm-hmm. as long of a time as they can. So yeah, I also think it's a benefit to invite them to like, if you're doing a summer camp, I know that can feel very weird because it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know this person, but it yeah. is, if they're a core kid, um, a part of a part of a core family or that they're, they're just family is a part of your church, they will go and they will attend yeah. and they will be the kids that you will want to get to know as early as possible. And mm-hmm. so promote in May or June or whatever you can to have those three extra summer months when you're more available to do that um, is a huge win. Um, I also think the second thing that you should do is you should work with your uh, kids ministry director um, and, and how can you get in front of them in their class as early as you can. Um, Mm -hmm. So make sure that they know you and the leaders that they're going to be connecting with as soon as possible. Um, So if you are, able to get to kids camp and you're able to lead those last kind of year yeah. or two years of serving so that they'll know, Hey, in a year I get to be with them and just be yeah. as wild and silly as possible just to make it more fun for them of like, Oh, I get this in the future. You know, mm-hmm. a part of the, the sad reality is that there can be a lot of turnover in student ministry. But if, so if you have a lot of adult volunteers that can get in front of them and just be like, have fun with the thing that they're doing to to build more anticipation and some hope yeah. and some excitement for that transition, it will make things a lot easier because that is a big transition to go from elementary school to middle school. School times mm-hmm. may change, all those other things. Um, and developmentally, like it, it is just a big milestone for for a kid. Make it fun for them. Make and, yeah. and get in front of them as much as you can to make it a little bit easier for them and in front of their parents as well. Yeah. I love that. I also agree about the time of promotion Sunday. I think, um, there's crazy stats about the percentage of drop off that you get from kids to students and how you just see Mm -hmm. this huge gap of kids. We're really involved in kids ministry. And then they kind of spend the summer. There's not really a lot for them. And then they finally promote in the fall and they're like, I'm not making time for this because I have no friends and they just don't Mm -hmm. come. And Mm -hmm. you get this huge disconnect between the two ministries. And so I think if you can find some ways to bridge the gap over the summer, and I've seen churches do really, really great, like sixth grade or sixth, seventh, eighth grade only events over the summer that just to kind of help bridge that gap. And maybe you can't, maybe you aren't taking kids to camp, but there's other ways to do it if you don't want to take those 
what we like to call rising sixth graders to <laughs> camp. Um, and so I think that's a big thing. Also, on a side note, like promoting kindergartners at the beginning of the summer also frees up a lot of space in your preschool room. At, in May, mm-hmm. your three, four, five-year-old classrooms are bursting at the seams most likely. And so getting those kindergartners out just gives you a lot more breathing room as you head into the summer. So that's our like hot take on when to do promotion Sunday. Yes. There's a lot of churches who do it in the fall, which is you do what works for you, but here's our official recommendation. Yes, please. Um, <laughs> and so can I, I uh, love Lauren, can I talk oh, about the blessing ahead. aspect of this? So oh, yeah. you know, in as we kind of talk about the the middle school blessing, that promotion element from fifth to sixth grade, we have like we teach parents, hey, this is a big step developmentally for their kids. Mm-hmm. This is this is kind of the first step where your kid is becoming an adult. And yeah. they are they are deepening their understanding and their involvement in discipleship in the church, in the broader church. So for us, mm-hmm. we don't have Sunday morning programming for students. So they go and they're part of the Sunday morning service. And this is an opportunity for our parents to say out loud blessing over their kids as they transition from a Sunday morning um, program to, Hey, you're now a part of the church. Like this is for mm-hmm. you. And yeah. so how can we engage our parents into blessing their kids, equipping their kids, uh, and being a part of the full body of the church of believers. And so yeah. that's the, that's the big blessing element where we engage parents into that as well. Yeah. It's almost like there's those three components, the teaching, equipping, and blessing, almost those, the like teaching and equipping almost has like two parts to it. There's like the teaching and equipping the parents, but there's also teaching and equipping the kids of like, here's how you can read your Bible on your own. Here's what Mm -hmm. it looks like to be in friendship and be in discipleship with adults who also love Jesus. Like there's these components that it's almost like, oh, now our mindset is shifting to teaching both kids and stu- and parents what this new season looks like. And yeah. I think that's really intentional to think through those different components. Let's back up a little bit and let's okay. talk about when do you think, I have some thoughts on this, but when do you think is the time to start talking about Promotion Sunday? It's a great question. Well, if I do promotion Sunday in the um, at the beginning of the summer, I want to give kind of three months out. And some mm-hmm. of that is like from the from like internally, like we yeah. need to be starting to plan this through kind of really well here and what the steps are going to be. So for me as a student minister, I want to start to get uh, that conversation going. But then I also want to be present in those classrooms at least once a month. Um, yeah. kind of leading up to promotion Sunday and just be present in as many services as I can with, with my fifth graders. So I would say mm-hmm. three months is a kind of a good, Hey, let's at least start talking about it. What would you say? Yeah, I would say, and I would push it back even a little bit further and say like beginning of January, this is what I always mm-hmm. like to do. I would say beginning of January, I pull my fifth grade list. And Mm -hmm. I say, here are our fifth graders. And I go through and say, here are our most consistent fifth graders. Here are the ones who come every once in a while. I highlight the ones, here are the ones who already have siblings and students, just to get to know the makeup of our graduating fifth graders a little bit more, if I didn't already. Of course, like when I was in the church planting, small church world, like I knew the fifth graders, I knew their families. It was a much more intimate kind of conversation, but in big church world, I didn't know all of our fifth graders as at a personal level. And so pulling that list really helped me go through and say, oh, okay, I know this, this is a little bit about their personality. They have older siblings already. And then I pass that list on to the students team and say, hey, here are incoming sixth graders. Here's all the notes that I have about them. So you can begin to get to know them. That's good. And just like we kind of begin kind of praying over that list and and, yeah. and then kind of early, late winter, early spring, we send that initial parent email that's like, hey, you've got a graduating fifth grader. Here's what that looks like. And it's and yeah. it's usually from the perspective of the student pastor or student director saying, Hey parents, we're so excited that you're going to be a part of our ministry. Um, and then we always invite them into some sort of parent meeting or just something where the parents get to know the student team. And so there's, 
because parents have so many questions. It's things yeah. like what time, where do they show up? Are like, what's your technology policy? Like just all of those questions tend to come up in a parent meeting of like, what yeah. are you teaching our kids? How are you talking about identity? Just like some of those big topic things that parents are curious about. You want to give enough time for them to think about it and be able to yeah. ask questions and then be able to ask questions again. And what I love about gathering those parents together is that they can see it's a visible um, explanation of the kids and students team working together. And exactly. so both yeah. those kids and student staff are showing up to this meeting and it's basically like the kids person saying, Hey, I'm passing the baton to Matt and here's what that looks like. Here's what you're going to expect. Mm -hmm. Matt's going to show up in the classroom over the next couple months. And you're going to see um, dates coming about, coming out about summer events and fall events mm -hmm. and just kind of allowing them to see, oh, this isn't just Matt's now taking over. It's no, we see the partnership and they're thinking about yeah. the whole family unit. And so yeah. I always love doing meetings like that. I think it's fun for the parents to also... I think so many conversations that happen is like, well, what school is your kid going to? What school is your kid going to? What sports team are they playing on? And so it's a time for parents to connect as well and yes. deepen those friendships across families. Cause you may, you never know, you may end up at the same school with a lot of parents that you see on Sunday mornings, which is always really sweet. Yeah, exactly. So with the, most tangible part of our promotion currently, we do promote in the fall here now. And so we have like big parent meetings um, at the at our kickoff event or we're exactly doing that. We tell parents, hey, mm -hmm. this is so crucial for you to be here, not just to yeah. know each other, but to know us and to know uh, the vision, the curriculum, all those things, and to answer questions. That is super, super crucial. Um, but we, one of the things we do for the kids as well and the, and the students is the week before promotion, we give a tour of the space that they will be in. And so yeah. they, have, they have their class in that space. And that's where they go. That's where their pickup is. They get to see the space that will be theirs in the next week. Mm -hmm. And then that blessing is an event in that space where they get to meet with their parents and do all those things there. Just as a more yeah. tangible, hey, this is where I'm going. You know, this yeah. is where I'm going to be in the next place. Super helpful. Yeah, that's awesome. What are some things that you try and hit on when we talk about teaching? Like, what are some things that might be helpful for like a kids and student leader to know? Oh, maybe you should try and teach parents about X, Y, Z. What are some things that you find yourself teaching parents often during this season? A lot of it is hey, as things change in your um, soon to be teenager, it mm -hmm. is not a time for you to step back. It's actually a yeah. time for you to lean in so many times, especially um, from middle school to high school as well. It's it's be like, OK, they're becoming an adult and they are more independent and you want to bless that and honor that. But that is not a hands off approach like the, hmm. the move to adulthood is a very hands on approach to life. And so we give them kind of practical questions of like, hey, hey, your conversations that you had before about comprehension about life are now going to change. They're going to get deeper and you have yeah. to like have to ask, hey, tell me more about that. Like you mm -hmm. have to be listening with an ear that's like, okay, there's something else going on. I need to know more. And so tell me more. Uh, ask me why you think that. Like just giving them kind of and teaching them, hey, this is an opportunity where they're starting to comprehend things and I can ask them better questions to go a little yeah. bit deeper into helping them understand who they are and what their identity is in Jesus. Um, and then just say, hey, this is a total hands-on approach to becoming an adult this is not the time to back away. This is not yeah. the time to say, oh, I'm going to let them be more independent. Um, yes, that's true. But they are also, you are also stewarding uh, a ch your child and you have to mm -hmm. do it well. So be hands-on in that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever, one thing I always think about when it comes to this transition for parents, like, do you ever think or talk about when parents don't know how to answer a question? Like when yeah. you think about big topics around technology and identity and I don't know, just conversations about what they're learning and students about the Bible and about God, like how can you equip parents to still be hands-on, but mm -hmm. not know all the answers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's the, 
the humble approach of saying, I don't know, but I'm here for Mm -hmm. you and I'm willing to help process these things with you. So uh, we just started this year uh, a parent newsletter. It's kind of like an equipping newsletter where every parent in our ministry is getting it. And we're going through topics that encourages them to be hands on. So they, so this is not like our, or like, Hey, here's all the dates and everything. This is totally, Hey, we are equipping you on how to parent well in this season mm-hmm. of life. Things like, t- things like technology and sports. And um, we're doing baptism in a couple of weeks. And like, we're talking about uh, identity and all these other issues that are coming up. And we want to kind of inform, we want to help them know a little bit more than what they maybe yeah. already know. But then to give them really tangible steps, tips, and questions to be able to do that well, I think it does start with the humble approach of, I don't know, but I'm here for you, and I love Mm -hmm. you, and I care for you. And so I'm going to look, I'm going to investigate, and we're going to continue this as a conversation. Um, But then also, I think one of the things that parents also do is like, they need to ask, hey, what do you mean by that? So if they're talking about technology or if they're asking about identity or sexuality or the big things that can come up in um, as a, as a kid becomes a teenager, like, Hey, what do you mean by that? What do you think Mm -hmm. when you hear that phrase or that word, what are you hearing? What are your friends talking about? And just having that be an open conversation um, in life. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, Talk, uh, talk a little bit about, the fun part of this. Cause obviously like you want to make it fun. You want to make like, you want to make student ministry a place that kids look forward to going to. And obviously we told our promotion Sunday stories at the beginning of this episode. And I would not recommend doing that, but still like having this like celebration, this party aspect again, with any big transition, there's going to be kids who never want to leave kids ministry. I get that question Mm -hmm. every year of like, what do you do with your fifth graders who just don't want to leave? And I say, you just say fly. Like you have to go (laughs) and like close the door (laughs) (laughs) behind them. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah. And unless they want to come back and serve like I did. Uh, Uh, (laughs) But, (laughs) but it's like, how can you make student ministry exciting and fun and um, inviting for all kids? This, uh, this is the most challenging part, I think, of any ministry in the church. It's student mm. ministry. It in some way has to be attractional. It has yeah. to be because teenagers are engaging in fun and there are so many different uh, fun avenues out there. It has to be a place where, oh, yes, I belong prim- primarily. Like I understand the gospel. I belong here. But it, a kid like wants to go and be a part of yeah. youth group and your ministry. Like that's a big thing. This is an opportunity where either they'll get forced to go and they'll hate it or they want to be there and they will love every moment of it. Mm-hmm. So you have to have some element of fun. So we have these things called bashes and our bashes are just like a big party. Uh, we kick off our school year with uh, back to school bash and it's like a color war. It is like the biggest thing. There's all the food, all the inflatable, like it's everything and it's huge. Yeah. And we make it into a big big party, just celebrate, Hey, this is a transitional moment for you. Uh, Mm -hmm. at the end of the school year, we have a summer bash where we're giving away big prizes. We're making it the most fun ever. And it's just like, this is a fun thing that you will be a part of. Um, in years past, we've done just like, um, slop wars and pies in the face where the kids Mm, are doing it for their adult leaders. It, yeah, it is a little (laughs) gross. You can say in children's ministry, Lauren, but like it, you have to make it, you have to make it fun. You have yeah, to make it enjoyable do. because you do. that's contextualizing the gospel to a teenager, to a middle schooler. And mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like that's a big part of what we do. It's not yeah. everything, but it is something and you cannot yeah. neglect it. It's not, I don't think you should think most about the games that you play. I think you should think about how you can articulate the gospel well, but you have to have some level of fun because uh, yeah. this is one of the conversations I'm having with my leaders in their small group. They have the wiggles. They are moving around and they're bigger wiggles than the kids. And if you don't mm-hmm. get all that energy out, it will ruin small group and the teaching yeah. of the gospel will never land. And so there yeah. has to be some element of fun, energy release um, for middle schoolers and high schoolers too. They love it. They love all that stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. And I love what you said of it, the belonging piece and so much of the research that we're seeing right now come out of Lifeway and even Barna is you have to belong before you can believe. Yes. 
And just like you have to feel like God loves you and you can belong to his kingdom before you actually say, okay, I believe in what this says and what the Bible is teaching me. And sometimes you want them to believe, you want to expect them to believe before they belong. Exactly. And in ministry, you have to do that. Okay. I'm going to, we're going to work towards belonging before mm. we can then push them towards believing and then push them towards becoming, um, yeah, exactly. which I think is really great. Okay. Let's talk briefly about senior graduation. Yeah. I know we briefly, you briefly talked about like middle school to high school, but I want to make sure we hit this like senior yeah. graduation because this is another pivotal transitional moment yeah. for yeah. high schoolers and for families. This is a big deal sending their kids off to college and like ending their season in like family ministry. And so talk to us about the importance of really celebrating well, the end of high school. Yeah, so we don't call it a graduating, we call it a commissioning, where we are blessing our students as they move into and commission them as adults, as adult disciples into the world. Um, this is the capstone event for our family discipleship. So they're... Um, the other only other time that they are on stage after except for senior commissioning is family dedication. When they're a baby, mm -hmm. they go up on stage and they are prayed for by our church um, that they will become a believer in Jesus. We pray for the families. And then this ends with a kind of repeat uh, rehearsal of this thing of senior commissioning where the church extends their hands to pray for them. Um, we throw a big party, but not only that, like this is the most meaningful blessing that I have experienced where yeah. our leaders are writing notes to their graduating seniors. Their parents um, are praying over their kid as this like last big thing. And it's like, Hey, I want to bless you in the name of Jesus into this next stage of adulthood. Like mm -hmm. there is a passing of, yes, I am your, uh, I am your parent, but now we will relate to each other differently as you move to yeah. being an adult. Um, so it, it honors parents as just to say, Hey, well done. Well done in discipling your kid, but then it also commissions those graduates into the next phase of their lives. Um, Hope, hope, hopefully they know, you know, they've gone through the sequence of all your ministry and you can yeah. say, Hey, you are a disciple, go out into the world and live on mission and serve in the church and go be a part of whatever church that you're going to be a part of, um, knowing that this is where you came from and that you're commissioned mm -hmm. from here to go into those places and advance the gospel. So it's this really yeah. sweet moment. It's a beautiful thing. It's one of those, Hey, let's bring the church family all together with these students again and, uh, just share their experience over the last 12 years. Yeah. I will say at the last three years that I've seen this done, I always cry. It always is like yeah, so tearful always. because I, you can always spot the parents yeah. of those kids who are up on stage. And I can't look at them because I'm like, it's going to be a puddle because I'm like, Oh yeah. my gosh, they're like <laughs> sending their kids away. And even though some of them don't go away, it's like a very, yeah. like you're still sending them out, out yeah. into the world yeah. to like be adults. And it's just always so emotional. And I think, it's a beautiful picture for a lot of churches, but our church does this is like you have, it's like kind of in the same season, you have baby dedications or family dedication one day. And then within weeks you have senior commissioning and it's just like a, wow, like life is so short and yep. parenting is so, it's such a short season. And it's like, you're going to squeeze everything you can out of it. Um, as like trying to raise these kids to be disciples of Jesus. And, um, and so I think that's a really beautiful way. And there's almost like, when you think about those three aspects of teaching, equipping and blessing, like it's almost like this teaching moment is not necessarily as heavily focused, even though there's mm -hmm. a lot of ministries out there who focus on parenting adult kids. And that's like, I think really crucial of like, Hey, now your child is an adult and there's a lot of things that go into that whole side, but you can leave that to like the adult discipleship. <laughs> yeah. I actually do think there's, there is a te there is a teaching element and it's not to those parents who are commissioning their kids. It's not to the students, uh -huh. but it's to the rest of the church. You're teaching oh. them that this thing is the end goal 
And mm-hmm. so, so you're right. We have family dedication. And then three weeks later, we have senior commissioning. And in mm-hmm. both of those elements, we're teaching family discipleship, what it looks like from beginning to end, yeah. what this could be for you and your family and inviting them in. So we're teaching them what it looks like and then inviting them in to do it yeah. as a family. So those are the only two times uh, we do a missions kind of uh, commissioning, but those are the only two other times where a student and a family might be on stage where they're blessed over for their family. Yeah. Um, we don't give yeah. compasses um, because Good. those aren't fun. Great. We uh, we're not giving anything. We actually give um, a, our gift is we print out the the blessing letter that the parents mm. will send us on the back of a picture of our town. Um, it's like the the Google Maps kind of version of it yeah. um, in black and white, and then our church logo on where the church is. And on the back of that, it's the the parent blessing letter that they get um, at that moment. And it's not like the most fun thing. I think it's sentimental mm-hmm. because like yeah. they can carry that wherever they want to go. And they it's like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. that's my hometown. And in their heads, they know on the back is a letter from their parents that bless them yeah. in the name of Jesus to say, hey, I love you, I'm with you, and I'm proud of you, which is just a huge, huge thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. And what just, fun, I think what, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I think there's a really sweet element of recognizing the church that you came from and yeah. knowing that like, no matter what happens, no matter what decisions you make, no matter where life takes you, you can walk in this building at any exactly. point. Exactly. Yeah. You and belong here. Yeah. Like, even though like my parents don't go to the church that I grew up in, but like, I know, like I walked in that building last year, we did a space tour there. And I was like, this is where I found, like, this is where I learned about Jesus. And like, there's nothing sweeter than walking in and being like, wow, like Jesus met me here over and over and over again as a child, as a student, and even like as an adult, um, just like having that milestone marker is really sweet. So what were you going to say about fun? I, I was just going to ask you, like, what, where have you seen the fun element, the the gift, the element of like senior commissioning or some of the other uh, things that we've talked about here? Where, what's been like the best giftings that you've seen? Um, senior commissioning is hard. I think um, I love the idea of like the typography. Isn't that the right word? Typography. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Of mm-hmm. like your city or your county or whatever. Um, I think that is really sweet. I love the written blessings. Um, like if you think about the milestones for your families who are going to be at your church from dedication all the way to senior commissioning, like if you were to encourage the parents to write letters at dedication, kindergarten, graduating elementary school, moving from middle to high school, and then senior commissioning, like how sweet would that be for a parent? Um, which is extremely hard to document because families come and go and leaders come and go. Um, but if you can, like what a sweet opportunity to do that. Um, yeah, I don't, it's, it's hard because seniors don't necessarily, it's hard to find. I feel like gifting them something is hard. Um, I mean, with anything, it's fun to do something college related. So like a gift card to somewhere or like something of like, Hey, we want to, kind of equip you as you go. Um, and like, I was talking to my husband about this cause we were joking about our promotion Sunday things. And he was like, my church didn't give me a gift. They gave me a scholarship to wow. like yeah. go pursue worship ministry at yeah. my unit at the university level. Yeah. And I was like, well, most churches are probably not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there is always an opportunity to kind of, I love the letters from leaders. I think that is really mm. sweet. Just kind of, I think, I think seniors that are more out of a sent at a sentimental spot in their yes. yeah. life yeah. anyways, um, yeah. where like a tangible thing may not be, um, like the most, I don't know, things didn't really come with me to college. It ended up staying at, my house and yeah. then it eventually gets thrown away. Um, yeah. but I think it is fun to do like a really nice party or just acknowledge yeah. them. Sometimes I feel like seniors, it's like, Oh, you're done. Like see it when you come back kind of thing. Exactly. Um, and yeah. just to recognize them a little bit can be really sweet for them. I think so too. And the last thing I'll say about this is sometimes, um, ministers can get bitter because, when it comes to the senior graduation and the senior commissioning, mm-hmm. there will be all these seniors that were not around in the last seven years oh. and they pop up 
And they're just like, hey, I would like to be a part of this. And what can happen is like, where have you been? You know, where is that? I think that can kind of be a little bit of a, you can put egg on your face when that happens. If you're a student minister in that way, just be as gracious and as kind as you can be, because it is a reflection. And maybe they have like other siblings that are younger than them that will be eventually be there too. Or maybe you Mm -hmm. can just minister to their family in a really good way. Like who cares if this is the first yeah. time that they're popping up, like disciple them well, love them well. You you can do it. Um, don't be offended. It's not about you. It's about pointing them to Jesus. And you have a big moment to do that in these last last weeks with them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so, I think that's such a good encouraging word because even when we think about kids ministry, like you'll get those families that move to your church and they have a fifth grader and it's halfway through yep. the school year. And I think it's really easy to focus on the kids who have spent a lot of time in your ministry and be like, these are the ones we want to continue to pour into. And it's like, no. And I think, um, churches that are around military bases do a really good job of this, of like, Mm -hmm. we're going to love these kids for as long as they're here and then send them off wherever they're going to go next. And I think that's the same kind of mindset for any graduation stage of like, whether you've been here for five years or you've been here for five months, like you're worthy of being celebrated and you're worthy of being discipled and encouraged as you transition into this next season. And so I think that's really encouraging for those student ministry leaders and those graduating seniors, because it is, they kind of pop back in and say, here I am. Like, celebrate me as I'm like graduating and, um, or it's like, if you're moving to, I don't know, for me going to a Christian university, like you had to get a letter of recommendation from a pastor. Yeah. And so like you have those things kind of pop back in and you're like, I don't even know who you like, I don't even know Uh how many times you've been here, but I'll write this letter of recommendation anyways. Um, so that's a good reminder. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I hope this conversation was helpful for those listening. A couple of fun announcements. Matt and I have both created a promotion Sunday gift guide, one set for kindergarten and fifth graders, and then one set for like incoming sixth graders and then that middle school, high school age range. And so those are live on the website. If you're trying to figure out what to do for your kids in terms of gifting them something or events to do with them, we've kind of written out a lot of the things that we've mentioned here. And so you have some really good tangible ideas on how to celebrate those kids well. It's interesting, like kindergarten in like preschool graduation is so much more like here's something you can gift the whole family. And then it like slowly transitions mm-hmm. into like just getting the kids something. Um, but and anyways, they're intentional. There are things that we have gifted. There are things that we recommend um, and really love to give kids. So that's a fun little yeah. announcement. Yeah. Okay. Anything else we want to announce, Lauren? Oh, yes. (laughs) I did almost forget. (laughs) Um, But we are super pumped. So normally the Kids Ministry Circle podcast takes a break um, either one month in the summer, whether it's June or July. We've only been doing this for two years, and so we don't have a consistent rhythm. But – Um, I thought it'd be fun for Matt to take over the podcast for the month of July. And so um, Matt's going to kind of sneak in with some of his friends and host the Kids Ministry Circle podcast for the month of July and have some really great conversations with student ministry leaders about milestones and student ministry things and games and blending McDonald's meals. I'm just kidding. You're not going to talk about that. What not to do. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) What not to do. (laughs) Um, So Matt, anything else you want to share about your summer podcast takeover? Yeah, we have five weeks lined up. We're going to talk with my co-minister here at the church. Uh, We're going to talk to one of my best friends. We're going to talk to one of my mentors and then two other guys that I look up to in ministry. And I'm so excited to just consider what can thoughtful and kind of Jesus-focused student ministry look like and how to disciple kids well, how to endure, uh, make it through the kind of the hard seasons of ministry. And my favorite part about it is every single week, we're going to go through a real life case study and we're going to learn uh, like, hey, what does the Bible speak to this thing that we might go mm-hmm. through? And then think about practical steps, action steps that if that were to happen to you, what could you do in that situation? Yeah. We're going to learn from people, their mistakes, their successes. And it's just going to be, I think it's going to be a fun five weeks. 
yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So this is a great podcast. If you work alongside a student ministry team or a youth pastor or whatever roles you have at your church, send this to them because this, this podcast episode applies to the whole family ministry team. And so we would love for you to send this to your family ministry team and get them excited about the conversations that Matt is having in July and just continue to follow along. So thanks, Matt. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity, Lauren. It's going to be great.